In today's episode, I'm going to be going over a very challenging leather fragrance. Very challenging. But I like it. Today we're going to be going over the newest one from Orto Parisi, and it's Cuyom. Not a lot of talk about this bad boy, and I can kind of understand why. It's not the easiest fragrance to wear. My test drive's over, and it's time for me to put my two cents in on this bad boy. So stay tuned. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family, and welcome back to My Two Cents. My name is Brian, and this is the channel all about helping boost your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent memory. Happy Christmas Hangover Day. That's what I dub the day after Christmas. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas, and I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Hope you've got your coffee in, possibly an IV drip, who knows? Whatever the case may be, I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and had a blast with your friends, your family, and your loved ones. Let me know in the comments down below, what did you get for Christmas? It doesn't have to be fragrance related. Let me know anything cool that you might have got underneath the Christmas tree. Was Santa good to you this year? Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this leather beast in today's Whiffs and Snips. So I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying this right. Qoeum? Qoeum? Quoem, not 100% sure. I've heard a couple people review this and they said it's, they, they all said it different ways. So I, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but here is the box presentation. And if you guys know anything about Orto Parisi, Orto Parisi, the nose behind the fragrances is Alessandro Gutierrez, who also does Nasamato. Some call him the crazy nose because he is that. He is a awesome modern perfumer. But here's the coolest thing that I like about the box. It's like origami. Ooh. Laying inside, you have your bottle. It is a kind of a pain in the butt to get out. That's the box. Here's the bottle. Comes in the standard Orto Parisi bottle. Except this one's got a leather jacket, which I really like. They all have custom caps, and this one has a cool little symbol on the top there. And poof, just like that, I have a cat. This cat was just sitting there crying at the door. This is Larry. Say hi to Larry, everybody. This is my last day of dog and cat sitting. But let's see if Larry will chill. Anyways, leather jacket wrapped around the bottle. Apparently, this can come off. I tried. I didn't want to rip the leather jacket, but... That's pretty much it. You have this cool logo right here. All right, this is my scent of the day, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray it on. I haven't sprayed it on yet, but here we go. And I'm only doing two sprays, then one on my hand. Because let me tell you what, guys, this thing is loud. Orto Parisi and Nasamato, they tend not to give out the note breakdowns, which I actually really enjoy. I know Fragrantica has a, what they think the note breakdown is posted up on their website, but I, I'm not going by that. I like that Alessandro really wants you to figure out what you get from the fragrance. Make the fragrance your own. We all smell things differently, but this is what I get out of it. Right up top, it starts out with that leather. I'm also getting some sort of like patchouli and woods to start things out. Not really any citrus. There could be a little bit of citrus there just to kind of pop things off, but it is gung-ho right into this smoky, rustic leather. Lots of animal notes to start things out. It's brash. It's harsh. It's almost like leather that's been soaking up like grease and motor oil for many, many years. It almost kind of also reminds me of like a welding apron that has been just soaking up all these metallic shards and, and oils and greases for so long. But there is definitely some cedar in this. Lots of cedar. And the cedar in this is like a smoky cedar. Like a lot of smoked cedar chips. This has a lot of smoke going on. But I like it. Now, not too long ago, I did my review of a Bee and Fumé. Which is a smoke-driven, incense woody fragrance. This is like its big bad brother. Sort of. Completely different fragrances. This is more of that big bad leather fragrance that has some cedar and smoky characteristics, but a lot more smoke. But there is a sweetness. There is a subtle sweetness, not allowing this to become so brash that it's unwearable. Now, I could see some people thinking that this is unwearable, because it's tough. 
It is. It's a challenging fragrance. But this is a hardworking man's fragrance, 100%. If you work on cars, if you are working outside all the time, if you're working with your hands, I think this would be a good fragrance for you. Because what it does is it kind of smells like the elements that you're working with, but makes them smell better. The leather is this really rough, brash leather. It's animalic, it's rustic, it's worn, it's seen its days, and I like it. I thoroughly enjoy it. But there is a part, about 30 minutes into the fragrance, where that leather becomes extremely oily. It's like it's been dipped in motor oil and just left out to dry. I believe that sweetness is coming from some ambery characteristics. It could also be some balsams flowing through it because this is a very balsamic and very resinous fragrance. The patchouli adds a nice greenness to it. There is also some other green facets laying in the background, but lots of woods, and I'm talking lots of cedar, but I do love me some cedar. It also has a certain musk in it, and it's a dark musk, but lots of oily drenched leather. Now, everything I'm saying probably makes this sound very off-putting. Well, I'm gonna tell you, this is not a mass appealing fragrance whatsoever. This is a modern take on classical perfume. What Alessandro Gutieri does is he creates modern perfume. He uses a lot of aroma chemicals, a lot of synthetics, but always adds a classic twist on it. Very long lasting fragrance, stupid long lasting. Projection is massive on this thing, especially in the first couple hours. But when it dries down, that's when this actually becomes pretty special because that rough and tumbled leather turns into this really nice, soft, suede leather. The woods become a little bit more predominant and that smoke takes a back seat, allowing the leather to do what the leather wants to do and just be nice and soft and supple. But again, not an easy wear. In fact, I don't know if I could ever see a lady wearing this. I know it is definitely categorized as a unisex fragrance, but the type of lady that would wear this is like Trinity from The Matrix. Rocking her Ducati, working on her motorcycles. That's the type of lady that I could imagine rocking this. It is a really good fragrance, and it's not something that I'm going to wear all the time. This is going to be an every now and again type of thing. If I'm going outside, I'm working, doing some construction, I'm rocking this. If I'm working on cars, nah, it's gonna be this. This is not an elegant fragrance. This is a rough and rugged type of fragrance. This is for a true collector of fragrances. Those who appreciate the art behind the fragrance. That enjoy challenging fragrances because you know what challenging fragrances do for me? They boost my confidence. This is a confidence booster because it takes confidence to wear it. If you don't have confidence rocking this bad boy, it, my friend, will wear you. I could see the wearer enjoying this more than the people he's surrounding himself with. But if you rock this with confidence, I could definitely see this pulling some attention because it's loud, it's proud. It's a hardworking man's type of fragrance. So Orto Parisi, I love what uh, Alessandro Gutieri does with Orto Parisi. It's all about the elements. It's all about creating fragrances based around mother nature, the elements and history. Awesome concept, definitely one that you're gonna want to try. You must sample this. You must try this before you buy it. If I had sampled this before I bought it, I still would have picked it up because I think it's a really interesting, unique, loud and proud, rough and rugged type of leather fragrance. Not for the faint of heart whatsoever. So be fair warned. If you like creative, artistic, bold leather fragrances, this right here is definitely one that I suggest checking out. But again, sample it. Sample. How many times I gotta tell you? Test drive. Jeez, I sound like a broken record. But that's it, guys. I think that Orto Parisi Qeom, Qoeum, however you say it, is a really good fragrance. Not for the faint of heart. Not an easy wear whatsoever. Quite challenging, but that's what I enjoy about it. If I was to give this a rating, I would give it a 7 out of 10, which I think is a good rating for this. Yeah, I think it's very creative. I think it's a very bold leather, and I think that Alessandro Gutierrez definitely nailed exactly what he was trying to portray with this fragrance. From the leather jacket to the juice inside. Leather, leather, leather. Definitely a challenge, but if you're up for it, check it out. Well, that's it for me today, guys. Larry, say bye. Bye, fragrance family. Isn't he so cute? Look at him. So mischievous.
Anyways, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Orto Parisi. If you tried the new badass leather fragrance, Qoeum, Qoeum, the C1, the big bad leather one. You know what I'm talking about. Drop me a comment down below, but that's it for me and Larry today, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do me a favor. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.